Has the Ridge really done anything new or innovative with their wallet since, I don't know, since it was released? Maybe I'm being too mean. Today we're going to do an update on our comparison between the Ridge and the Aviator Band wallets. Now a number of things have changed as the two companies have made adjustments to increase their competition with each other. So first, let's take a look at the Aviator models. If we look at the evolution of the Aviator product line, it all started with the original, which they call the Classic. This uh, of course on the flip side has a coin tray, they all have a coin tray on one side, and then you access the cards from another, and that way coin trays or the cavity tray, as Ridge likes to call it, doesn't fall out. And of course you've got the uh, money strap on the back. There is a felt piece right here, which I like because it helps grip the cash. Then of course you still have the classic, but it has a money clip. So that's an option you can get there. And then last year they introduced this slide. This is a pull strap, which is great to have access to your cards that way. Uh, it did do a little modification on the coin tray because of the slide or the strap itself, but still good capacity there. And then just a month or so ago, they introduced what they call the slide one. This has no thumb push here. And you can see the evolution of the thumb push between the classic and the slide that we have here. The slide uh, has, is smaller in nature, more specific to your thumb and, and directional, and the slide one does not. Now they have other materials, of course, uh, the carbon fiber, which is here. This is a cool one because you can get these anodized screws as part of it. And you can see from the aluminum selection that they have many, many to choose from, all kinds of different colors. And of course, you can customize them a lot in uh, different settings, which we'll talk about. They also have a titanium version, which when fully configured, comes in at an eye-burning $765 price tag. So <clears throat> yeah, you heard me right, $765. Now I have a selection of various different Ridge wallets here. Got the burning embers, or the, the forged embers, the forced ash. Uh, we've got the, uh, boy, which one is this one? Can't quite remember. The topology, uh, carbon fiber, Damascus. You got the burnt titanium and a couple versions of uh, aluminum here. So if we look at the variety that you can see on screen here that Ridge has, it's quite a bit. They have a lot that you can get from, especially on the aluminum side. But there are no differences. All the models are all the same by way of their functionality. All you have is a variety of materials that are in there, which is really quite fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. And they've also introduced a separate tray, a cavity tray, which really is to compete with the Aviator and what they've done. And they've also introduced a what they call a bottle opener, but it is a limited uh, it is a limited uh, function tool because it's got some. Uh, some capability for screws, a uh, little bit of measuring, that kind of thing. And this really is more to compete with Dango. So there you go. Now let's jump into the card and cash insertion test. Then we'll move into a wallet by wallet comparison. Now you'll notice that I used some embossed cards as there have been comments about seeing those in testing, especially with these particular wallets. Embossed cards have raised letters and numbers on them, and that can actually decrease the number of cards you can place inside of a particular wallet, despite the capacity it may talk about. Okay, now we're gonna walk through and I'll compare each of the products to each other. I'll mention anything new between each maker since the last video. Let's look at card capacity and the Aviator first. The Aviator has the ability to adjust the size via the included screwdriver, and the Aviator can hold up to 20 cards. And of course, it, has, it comes in configurations of 1 to 7, 4 to 11, 7 to 20, and these are the three order options, and it's that flexible, but of course you can make all these changes yourself. Now if we go after and look at the 
Ridge, this is the nice Damascus model, it's got good heft to it. It can hold up to 12 cards before you start overstretching the elastic. Yes, you never want to overstretch the elastic, especially when you have a Speedo. Speedo? Uh, I don't have a Speedo. So what's changed? Well, nothing. The capacity of both have stayed the same. So what about cash clips? Well, you see that these both, both the Aviator and the Ridge, have a cash strap. So really, they're the same. They, they, one is horizontal, one is vertical, and they, they operate. I, I personally think that the Ridge one is easier to operate than the Aviator, but they both have a cash strap. Again, what's changed? Nothing. They continue to offer the same options, albeit the Aviator has increased the custom strap options, but it's still a strap. Now let's talk about a cash clip. Well, both, of course, wallets have this cash strap that we're talking about, but uh, the only one that has additional capabilities is the Ridge. It comes also with a cash clip. And if you get a combo package, you also can swap it out, <clears throat> the uh, strap for the clip, and you can move between them based off of your preference. So in this case, What's changed here? Nothing. The Ridge still provides both options, both a clip and a strap, with the Aviator only providing a strap. So are you team clip or team strap? I, hmm, that doesn't sound right. Now before I start getting comments about who still uses coins, I'll mention again that the world still uses them and they're used very heavily outside the United States. But to avoid all the controversy, because we all know the world needs a new controversy, Ridge introduced a tray, but they call it a cavity tray instead of a coin tray. Now they were smart, but the word Cavity, hmm, brings to mind teeth or search. Neither sounds good to me. These people know something. I want full cavity searches. Everyone, go deep on them. As mentioned, many don't like having their cash exposed via a strap or clip. So the tray can be used to store cash folded, which allows you to remove the clip or strap and keep the wallet very slim and clean. So we can see here with the cavity tray for uh, the ridge, you're able to fold cash twice, put that in here, and really keep it out of the way of prying eyes, which many don't like, and you could dispense with the strap or the clip. And if we look at the aviator here, we see that on the back, which is opposite of the card, of the card uh, pull strap, you can have your little uh, coin tray in there, add cash, slip that in, and you're just as much in good shape of not having to put anything on the outside. Now the tray that I used in this slide one is not the tray that uh, comes with, let's say, the slide. Or let me grab the slide. Right here, with this slide. And the reason why is because the pull strap, it needed to be modified to adjust and provide uh, capabilities to compensate for what's going on there. And so you lose a little bit of space in here. And the problem is that this doesn't work very well with cash folded twice. If it was this big, it does. And so on this slide one, I actually took the uh, tray from the Classic and it works just fine and there is no interference there. So uh, something to, to consider if you're wanting to put cash inside the Aviator using the tray. So what's changed? Well, Ridge saw the included Aviator coin tray and immediately provided one they call a cavity tray since you can put other things in there. Also, Aviator began lining their trays to reduce coin rattle. That was a problem we had in our original comparison. And adapted it to the slide version, that's the pull strap version, which kind of reduced the capacity on the interior just a bit. So let's look at the beveled card entrance. Well, if we take the Aviator Classic and the slide, and the slide one, it is top down, right? And if we look very closely here at these beveled edges, and we can do this by having the cards come out here, um, you can see that they are beveled right here, and that's what provides the ease of insertion for cards to slide in and not catch on the top. Uh, the ridge does it very well because, really, you, you have to. And if you can see how this uh, comes out, that the bevel is provided right here at the top, and on both sides, that just make uh, extraction, but especially insertion uh, so much easier. And the reason why is because since this is a sandwich wallet and you will generally outside of pulling your top and lower card have to pull the entire stack out when you want to gain access to a particular card, then getting it back in easily is paramount for utilization and functionality of the wallet. So what's changed? Nothing. Both still have excellent entry points for cards, albeit with the Aviator vertically and the Ridge horizontally. 
So let's talk about the card insertion backstop. Well, what is that you say, Mark? Well, it's preventing cards from going crazy. So of course, on the sides we have uh, some guide elastic, but right here, it's this backstop here. So as you're pushing cards further, they just don't continue to go out the back. That there is a way to capture the card, and the Ridge has this very well. It's a little different on the Aviator. Once the uh, Aviator folks introduced this pull strap and the slide version, the strap acts as the backstop on here, uh, which works nicely, but if you go to the classic model and there is no pull strap, there is no backstop. So cards can continue out the back. Whether that's a problem for you or not is really up to you, but it's an interesting difference between the two wallets. What's changed? Really no change. I've come to like this having a backstop really totally, and I don't believe you'll have cards fall out if you don't have one, but it keeps them all flush without me needing to do it like we see with other non-slide versions of the Aviator, the classic model. Now the difference here is when we're talking about having a tray involved. And if you take the cavity tray that Ridge has, and you put this in here, uh, you'll find that getting access to cards also involves pulling out your cavity tray. And that can be a bit of a nuisance, whether it's on the top or the bottom. It might be easier on the bottom here. But now you have to deal with this tray, which is not static. It's not in there on its own. It is considered almost like another card in the stack. And unlike the, the Ridge, if we go to the Aviator, uh, it has its tray underneath, meaning cards on top. You pull your tray from the bottom, and they, it is meant to be used separately and be contained uh, as a, a different feature within the wall. So what's changed? Well, there's more interaction with the coin and cavity tray, which introduces more pain for Ridge users when accessing the cards. It all has to come out. That's not the case with the Aviator because it's a flip. You pull cards from the top and you flip it over and have coins from the tray in the bottom. RFID. Well, we talked about classic Aviator, classic slide, slide one, uh, and, and the Ridge. They're, they're both the same. They both protect against 13.56 uh, megahertz signals. I've tested both, and that is what is used with credit cards. And this is really done based off of the material. When you have a metal version of the wallets that are here, and uh, you know, with on the, on the ridge side, and you've got metal, which is pretty much everything except for the carbon fiber, you have a naturally adaptive RFID blocking capability here. It's that simple. What's changed? Well, nothing. The metal used provides a natural RFID blocking, which is good, I guess. I, you know, I'm not much for RFID blocking. You can see this up here, but uh, it's more of a scam than necessary. But anyway, I digress. Now, what about manufacturer location? Well, you've got the ridge, which is manufactured in China and you've got the Aviator, which is manufactured in Germany. So what are our purchase options? Well, there are many different materials between both product lines. I think you've seen all the ones we've got in here on the Ridge coming in, and we've got all these different ones coming in here for uh, the Aviator. Uh, they're, they're all over the place on what they can do. Some with money strap, uh, no options, money strap with several options. They're you know, customizable to a lot degree on the Aviator side. Now, what about price for these? Well, on the pricing side, we can really get a feel for how things go because, well, they can be expensive type wallets. You've got anywhere from $78 up to $200 plus on the Aviator over here and $95 starting point up to $225 plus over on the Ridge. So Ridge has increased their aluminum version significantly with them rising from $75 to $95 in just a couple years. So what about maintenance? Well, all of these wallets are capable of having you as the owner perform maintenance on them. The elastic we have on the Ridge, there's elastic pull straps that are here on the Aviator, and both of those can wear out, stretch, or break over time. Because of the screws that are inherent here within the Ridge, and because you can actually get into the details of the Aviator through its screw plate, you can change all that, swap out all that material, and then have as good a new wallet again. So let's talk carry options. So what about carry? Well, fundamentally, you have two pieces of metal with elastic around them to hold cards. A rubber band could provide the same functionality as many have mentioned, but I'm not quite sure I'd like to pull out my rubber band wallet at a dinner party. But hey, I guess I'm not as fashion secure as some of y'all, which is fine. Now, regardless, you are dealing with metal. So a rear pocket carry, while possible, would really be more uncomfortable than just maintaining as a front pocket carry, which is really recommended. Due to it being a small footprint, it is light, and doesn't add undue bulk in your pocket unless you decide to carry a deck's worth of cards as you can kind of see here. This is what it looks like. Not really appealing, but you know, if you carry that much, well, you can. So which one is better? 
So has Ridge done anything innovative or new since its introduction six some odd years ago? And the sad answer is really no. They have added competitive reaction components like the tray and the tool card, which helps, you know, it's the bottle opener, which helps address more competition they have with Dango than anything else. But is, the, is all this non-change because they're moving into other products, which they are, they're expanding their overall product line, or is it because you can't improve on perfection? Well, you could argue both, but customers expect forward movement, improvement, and innovation generally with the products that they're attracted to. So overall, the Aviator continues to innovate, demonstrating you can do more with something as simple as a sandwich wallet. It, it really is there. So which one really is better? Well, I'll make it easy for you. If you like engineering, then the Aviator is nice. It's a conversation piece, and you can fiddle with it quite a bit. And if you like simplicity of carry, then the Ridge works very well with less complexity, which a lot of people like. So. Like always, it's up to you. We'll see you in the next comparison. Bye.